been here before, you've had the pleasure of hearing her speak. If it's your first time, you're in for a real treat. Terry Brown, affectionately known as Mrs. Brown, has a unique gift for teaching those who do not learn in the typical ways. Terry has been in private practice for over 20 years, and she is teaching one-on-one -on -one groups as well as teaching thousands around the world in her So Happy to Learn online programs. She has mastered the art of making learning fun and a successful process for both the learner and the teacher. Her mission is to share her gifts in a simple way for everyone so that they can express the joy of learning and teaching. Mrs. Brown's passion is teaching learners and parents that we can break out of the norms and experience joy and fun as we work together as partners in learning. So please welcome to the stage, Mrs. Brown. sheets today. You all have grown up happy sheets on your table. Don't look at them yet because I want you looking at me. <laughs> there will be a time because I want to explain all the things I want to explain to you. I have so many great ideas worth sharing. I got that from a TED Talk book I read before I came up here. And I think I can fit a lot of important things in 20 minutes. I will have to read some of it off my paper because I want to... Um, Make sure I don't miss anything. But anyway, <laughs> and also for you all who've never got on the stage and spoken before, this is my fourth year doing it. Fourth time at Dear Mom. The first time I did it, I was absolutely terrified. And the, the fear goes away after about a minute being on stage, so <laughs> I'm working through that right now. But I'm very happy to be here. But you know what? There's some things worth doing. Learning how to be a partner and learning to your learner and teach your learner is worth the anxiety and worth the pain. Me getting up here sharing with you the things that I've learned and discovered in the past 20 years is worth the anxiety I might be feeling right now or the putting together a talk. Okay, so a good TED Talk, you get your audience imagining, thinking with a story. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a few things to imagine. Imagine, picture in your mind a scenario where both you and your learner look forward to and even craved learning time together. Imagine a learner that fought against his teachers by pushing, throwing, running away, cussing, and when taught in a way he learns best, started to get up in the middle of the night to find his learning box so he could read. Imagine a learner whose parents were told he would never speak and he needed a voice assistant box. Imagine now he speaks so much you can't get in a word edgewise. Imagine a learner who was told he would never be able to write and would need to use a keyboard. And imagine now that writing notes to loved ones and journaling is his favorite thing to do. Imagine a teenager who could write and copy letters, but not write expressively. Then a year later, after being taught correctly, is in full flow of writing all their thoughts and emotions, and just wants to write all the time. These are all true stories that have not happened just once in my experience, but countless times. It is my mission and my idea we're sharing <clears throat> that we can turn around and teach well any and all of our learners if we do it right. This talk pertains to everyone here, not just new little ones coming up in the school system, 
not just new little ones who haven't learned to read yet. It pertains to everybody. It's about connecting with your child. You're going to see in the happy sheets where you're learning at your level and your learners learning at their level and you're both growing and expanding. Learning is at its peak when we look at the whole child. So Happy to Learn is a holistic program. This is where the richness and the success comes from. I'm known as the reading teacher, but it's so, so much more than reading. Okay, so now, you guys have been sitting for a while. When learners come to my house, they run up the pathway in happy anticipation. They knock on the door, I open the door, and before they come in, I say, are you focused? Are you smart? Are you ready to learn? And they say yes. And they come in the house and they're ready to go. So, <clears throat> get ready guys. I don't want to hear you. Are you focused? Yes! Yes! Louder! Yes! Are you smart? Yes! yes. Are you ready to learn? Yes. yes! Good! And then, when my, oh I didn't bring it, so we're going to do an imaginary ball. When they come in the house, you want to, you want to be, you want to set the tone. You want to get balanced. You want to have your brain balanced and you want to have your mind ready. So you can take in what it is you're about to learn. So I want everybody to get an imaginary ball in your hand, an imaginary ball, or an imaginary stone. A picture on that stone, there's a heart. On that ball, there's a heart. On the other side, it says, I am focused. Now what we're doing is we are balancing our brain. We're getting the left and the right hemisphere working together. OK, you got the picture. Let's count to ten while we do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now take that stone or that ball and put it on your heart. So we're not here to just teach your child to read or teach them to write or meet their IEP goals. Again, it's about meeting the whole child, and I have my child put the stone on their heart, or my teenager, whoever it is I'm working with, and I say, who do we want to send love to? So in your mind, think of three people that you want to send love to right now. I send love to Amy, because she has worked so hard to put this together. I send love to my husband, Mr. Brown, who couldn't do it without him. And I send love to everybody in the whole wide world. We do that. And then we say what we're grateful for. I'm grateful that it's not raining. I'm grateful that you guys are such a wonderful community who I have been connected to for many years. You're just like family to me. And um, there we go. So, but so now you're kind of, my learners are in the mood like, OK. It's not like, come on, we've got to sit down and learn. We're gonna, we get to sit down and learn, and we get to do all kinds of fun things. So, what does being a partner in learning mean? How I came to realize that it was important for me to teach this to my moms that I worked with. When I started this work and realized it was my passion, I looked at an education system as it was, and I shook my head, and I said, there must be a better way. Asking you shall receive. From that moment on, the path was laid out for me in many, many ways. One of the things I learned was that I needed to be successful. I couldn't be a typical teacher teaching a typical curriculum the way that it's done. I had to think outside the box. I needed to create materials that were interesting and easy to master. I also needed to become a partner in learning with my students. What are the attributes of a teacher who is a partner in learning? Patience with ourself and our learner. A sense of oneness with our learner. Equality. We are both the teacher and the learner. Supreme kindness and gentleness. Compassion. Not just for yourself, I mean not just for your learner, but for yourself. 
a sense of joy and carefreeness and fun. These may not come natural to most of us at first. They didn't come natural to me. But the more you practice, the easier it gets. You as a person begin to change and your learner begins to change and you both become happier. Now, we can do this if we implement the strategies and I can put my paper down because I'm gonna tell the story from, from my mind. So it, it came to me many, many years ago that what goes on in Ms. Brown's house is too good to stay in Ms. Brown's house. So that's why I became a teacher of teachers and parents. And from the very beginning, it's like, I can only teach one child at a time, but if I teach you how to teach your learner, just think how, better, how much better they'll do. So I've been doing that for a long while. Last year, the birth of, um, I should talk about happy sheets. The birth of happy sheets came about because Growing up happy sheets because I have a lot of learners who are adults now and they're ready for adult, more adult type um, content in their happy sheets, more, more intro, you know, looking into themselves and perspective. So Liliana's mom and Finn's mom over there, they let me practice on them. <laughs> so I said, okay, you guys, I saw them out in the garden painting and I said, you know what? I want you guys to come in the house. I want to have happy sheets for you. I want you to sit with your learner, and I want you to feel what they feel. I want you to become true partners in learning. They came in, they did it, they were such troopers. It was the most beautiful experience to see their anxiety about like, oh, I, I'm gonna not do these right, and to see their little learners put their arms around them and say, you got this, mom. And it was just, it was just beautiful. Okay, so I sort of, jumped ahead because I want to tell you what happy sheets are. Happy sheets, what they are and why they, they are so effective. Happy sheets are a template for learning, for learning, creativity in all subjects. A palette to practice and grow, learn and develop. A piece of paper designed to teach and inspire and cultivate an awareness to what is possible. So when I used to work in the school district, I'd have to help my learners and adapt worksheets for them. And then I learned there's a better way to create happy sheets for them, worksheets for them that they can learn and grow with. So that is really the staple of my program because on a, on a happy sheet, it covers so much. It covers reading, writing, math, art. So, and then we use the back of the happy sheets as our black canvas where we can teach and communicate with our learner. Where we can teach and communicate with our learner. We can write letters to each other and we can ask each other, we can draw and just have fun. Because we need a template to do things that are important to us, to talk about things that are meaningful. Now, I want to share, I'm going to, I'm going to share a couple of successful teaching tips and then we're going to dive in, we're going to play some Miss Brownhouse music and we're going to work on our happy sheets. But I want you guys to listen, don't look at your books too much right now because I want to share with you, just like I tell my students, focus. Okay, on the, the happy sheets are simple, easy to do and a lot of my learners, I've had the privilege of working with them since they were four and now they're 27. So I got to get to see like how it started when they just did a go stop. They did a straight line. And I'm gonna start, I brought a couple that I wanted to share because I went through all my stuff. And I, John started with me. See, this is what you're learning to do in the happy sheets. You're learning to get to a point where you have compassion and you can articulate in writing what it is you're feeling. These are just some samples of some things that happened this week. So um, on the back of John's happy sheet, I said, John, I'm speaking at Dear Mom on Saturday. Can you give me some words of encouragement, please? And in his beautiful handwriting, he wrote, be strong in the faith. Don't be nervous. You will do great. And when you walk on that stage, share your story for them and believe and do the right thing. <laughs> So, but I get letters like, I mean, every week it's just a book full of little things like this. Here's a picture of Liliana 
and her mom. They got on my waiting list, I think, before she, well, we had was even born. And then one of my students wrote, and I want you guys to, I want you guys to take this in, because this is for everybody. This is why I picked this one. Jeff wrote, you are a best mother in the world to have this baby in your life. Jeff Matson. So sweet. And then you get the things where, <laughs> so those are my writers who've been writing and doing lots of things, but then you've got the learners who are in the process of it, and they're scribble writing, and they're just writing messages, and they're telling me what they wrote. Now this was a big one. This learner's been with me for three years. She's 14 right now, and she's learning how to read. She's learning how to write, and it took three years and she brought me this paper that said, Leah, I love you, Miss Brown. She wrote a sentence for the first time. It took three years, but we were working up to it. And I wasn't worried because I knew it was going to happen. So as you, I'm, I've got three successful teaching tips. I want to, I got five minutes. But I want you guys, when you do your happy sheets, your grown-up happy sheets, have fun with them. I want you to... Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing. Don't worry about, am I going to spell a word wrong? Just have fun with it. And then one of the pages in here says, make today a happy day. Who would you like to meet today? Look around, go strike up, strike up a conversation, write about this experience. You know, there's a lot of things in here that we ask of our learners to do, but we're not quite, we don't want to do them ourselves. And I'm going to do these happy sheets today. I've got a table over there, and I'm going to... I'm going to do the grown up happy sheets today. So, I'm doing good on time. Okay, so successful teaching tips. I have about 30 successful teaching tips. And each one is as important as the other. I asked my online teaching group, I said, okay, moms, what are the top three you want me to talk about today? What are the three most important? Nobody could come up with the same three. Everybody, everybody had. All of them are important, but today I'm going to talk about, I picked three, teach, don't test, focus on the positive, mistakes are just practiced, and have a plan and stick with it. So I have heard so many people in my group and my teaching and my work will say, if, if I have learned nothing else but teach, not test, it makes all the difference in the world. Testing is, Julie, my friend Julie, Julie, tell me 10 things you've learned today, dear mom. You're smart, come on, come on. That's testing, that's testing with an adult. It throws our brain into fight or flight anytime we're tested. So if you're reading a book with your child and you're like, what's that word? What's this? What are we going to do now? Look at this. Oh, tell me all about that. You, you don't want to ask a question unless you really need to know the answer, like, do you have to go to the bathroom? Or you're 98% sure they know the answer so they feel comfortable, but you tell them. So, Julie, I'd like to share with you some things that I think you might have learned today. I, I bet you got a lot from what I said about happy sheets. Yeah. And then maybe we would have a conversation about it. So, everybody tests, everybody does it. It took me one solid year a whole year to not test anymore. Once I saw what a difference it makes when I'm not testing my learners and I'm teaching them. And I'm going to give credit to my mentor, Patricia Olwine, who wrote about this in her book and then learned. I think one of the best things that she told me was when she went to school and a little boy, she was doing a consult, a little boy had a bag of crackers. She went up to him and she said, hey, you got some crackers. How many crackers are in that bag? And then he just shut down. And the mom was embarrassed. Everybody's embarrassed. Come on, you know how many crackers are in there? Tell this whole line how many crackers are in there. And it was just a social, social mess. She went home and she laid in her bed and she thought, what right did I have to test that child and ask him how many crackers were in his bag in a social situation, you know? And I was like, wow, that really made an impact on me. And I already knew about the teach not test and I'd stopped it. 
But once I got it down complete and was not doing it at all, I never had to put anybody in time out. I had no behavior problems. And at the time, I was working private practice with close to 100 children in my home. So that's a pretty good, pretty good track record there. OK, so teach, not test. I have one minute and 26 seconds. OK, focus on the positive. Mistakes are just practice. We have a tendency just to see what's wrong, see what's wrong. Oh, you're not making your seat right. Let's just keep working on your seat. Anytime you see a mistake in a happy sheet, like when you guys do your happy sheet and you don't like something, it's just practice. It's not a mistake. Have a plan and stick with it. You guys, you just can't be all willy-nilly all over the place. I have a so happy to learn recipe that I follow. I stick to it and we do variations on it. But your learner has to know that we are building something that we're doing something that we can build on. Not just like, oh, let's do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You have to have a plan and stick with it. Okay. You guys, I'm so proud of myself. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I seriously did it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is you have five minutes of my time to do your happy sheets. And we're going to cue up the music. I think the music playing is probably the soundtrack to Miss Brown's house. I was going to do something a little bit different for you guys, and I tested it out with uh, Nikki, Liliana's mom, and she said, no, we want Miss Brown's house music at Dear Mom. So we've got the music, get started. I'm probably going to talk for a few minutes, and then we're going, guys, it's not break time yet. Are you getting up right now? You're, you're walking out on a talk. Five minutes of happy sheets and then potty break. Unless it's an emergency. Okay, you guys, look at it, have fun. I'm gonna actually, while you're doing it, I'm gonna look through it and if I can think of something to say, I will say it. So five minutes and then I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. And then you're on your own with your happy sheets. guys to be creative and I want you to have fun and use the back of the happy sheets too to write notes. There's a page on here. The third page is um, where you can write down some insights from your day here today. And if you guys come over to our, our table today, I have a lot of examples of happy sheets that my learners have done. And books, and if you want to learn more about the So Happy to Learn program, you can do that there. But it's been really, really nice for me to watch my moms do this, and Amy said that she would like to have the happy sheets here because she feels so relaxed when she does that. And she's like, wow, how introspective, like I never really thought about, I never really thought about some of these things, I never really thought like, never thought about that. And so in the grown-up happy sheets, there is a, there's easy ones and there's hard ones. There's more challenging ones. And you don't have to do it in any particular order. You can just come, come around and do some from the back, do some from the front. And um, I would love to see happy sheets. Um, I'd love to see some of your happy sheets. So, and if you guys have any questions about anything, like I say, I'm doing a breakout session today, so I'm here for the day, usually I'll stay the whole day, um, so I'm here for the day and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has about anything.
Okay, you guys, I'm going to keep riding, keep riding. I'm going to do like a gentle walk out here, and I'm sure they will let you know when break, but break time is actually coming, so I'm just going to take over right now. Go take your break, stay at the table. Right, Amy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys, come visit me over at the table, do your happy sheets, go to the restroom, it's break time, and dear mom. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you.